As part of your daily check, when you first come up to the power plant, first you're going to check the security of the power plant. Basically, you're going to check your fences to make sure that all, all the locks are in place, all the fence is in good condition, there's no holes in anywhere that somebody has tried to get in. You're going to check the security of your building to make sure your front door is locked. You're going to walk around the back side of the power plant. You're going to check the exhaust coming out of the back end of the, the, the generators. We're going to go up to the, the intermediate tanks. We're going to check the levels of the fuel in the intermediate tanks. As part of your check on your intermediate tanks, basically you're going to come out, you're going to look at your fuel lines, you're going to inspect the fuel lines to make sure there aren't any leaks in the fuel lines. You're going to check the, the level of your uh, fuel in your tanks. You're going to look at the clock gauges on them. If they get below 50% of the tanks, we recommend that you keep them topped off all the time. Okay, when you come into the generator room, the first thing you want to do is look to see which, which generator is actually online. What you'll have is a, a green indicator light telling you this unit is online. You'll have a contactor closure down here. Uh, this is the current unit that's running. As you walk down through, you'll look down through the rest of your panels to make sure that you have no fault indicator lights going on. All of these are in the automatic mode. As you get down towards the master section, typically this, this goes to sleep when, you, when you're not in here. To wake it up, all you do is push, push the button, the screen comes right back up. Uh, same way with the bus totalization and the station service totalization. At this point, you're going to grab your operator log sheets right here, and you're going to start filling out your information on your operator log sheet. First thing you're going to look at on your total bus totalizing meter is You've got your voltage, your amperage, and your frequency. Those are, the, those are going to be filled out on your form. From there, you're going to go to your demand KW. And what this basically tells you is the top one tells you what your KW demand is right now at the current level. And the second one down is your peak, your maximum demand level. The third button that you're going to push is the energy one button. The energy one button is basically your KWH. This is a total amount of electricity that has been generated from this power plant and put out onto the system. You'll do the same thing with the station service meter. It's got volts, amps, frequency. You push the power button, it comes up with your total KW that, that your station service is running at, the maximum peak that it's, it's, it's ever ran at. You go to the energy button. This one gives you your total KWH for the station service. Now we'll go on to the generator rooms to do our generator checks. When you come into your power plant, your daily inspections should include looking over your fuel system to make sure that there are no leaks around the system. Basically, you'll inspect all of the piping areas, look around all of your valves, check to make sure there's no drips anywhere. Um, you'll check the conditions of, of what your valves are set at. You're normally open or normally closed. They're all tagged that way to tell you which position the valves are supposed to be in. You come through and you'll check your, your daily fuel flow. Uh, there's a meter on the wall that basically you're writing down that uh, this is your fuel consumption for the day. That's a daily log item on there that you, you check. You check your fuel filter to make sure that there's no sediment in the bowl, any water, or anything like that. You'll drain that out if there is. You'll, wa you'll walk your way through the system. You'll check your day tank level, make sure your day tank level is working. Uh, it should be basically running between three quarters and full all the time. If it gets below that, you'll get an indicator light on your day tank panel. This, this panel basically, in, when you come in, the green light should always be on. You should have no red lights that indicate any type of a fault. As part of your daily checks, when you come into the power plant, you should check the conditions of your used oil blender. Basically, you'll want to check for alarms on this. Typically, you'll have a low oil level alarm. That means the hopper does not have any used oil in it. That means it's all been mixed up and used into the engines. As part of your daily checks on every engine, you're going to walk through them and you're going to physically check for any types of oil leaks, fuel leaks, coolant leaks. You're going to ch check the hoses, see if there's any drips, you know, just by rubbing your hand on the bottom of them, you can see if there's any leaks anywhere. Also, we have exhaust pipes on these that sometimes these will fracture and break at the top of these. Uh, that's the most common point that they break. If they do break, you'll get an exhaust leak that will be sucked directly into the engine and it'll plug up the air cleaners. On every air cleaner, there's an indicator, that a restrictor indicator, that tells you whether or not the air filter needs to be changed out or not. There's also a vent crank breather that filters out the oil out of the vent crank, and it has a filter in it with an indicator too. These all have indicators that pop up and will only be reset when you take them off and push them down and change the filter out. 
on the normal operating procedures of the engine, when an engine is online and running, you'll have this, this sight gauge that's on the side. Basically what you have is you have a red indicator line that tells you the normal operating running level of the oil on this machine. And then you have another line, the yellow line that's on here, that basically tells you when you're starting to get low on your system. When it reaches this, this line, you need to shut this engine down and then go to your dipstick, add oil, and check it with the dipstick to see what the oil level is at. If you see any residues of oil, you know, you just wipe them down, get that residue off. That's, a, that's one thing you should do every day on these machines. If you see a leak on these, they should be wiped down to cleaned up. These sight gauges that we have on there are not made to be used as the oil indicating level. Basically, you have to shut the machines down and check them with a dipstick all the time. Do not use this because you can overfill the engines and blow the seals out on them if you don't do it properly. With the batteries on this system, basically once a month you'll be checking the levels of the fluid in the battery. You'll ch check for corrosion. You'll clean up any connections that need to be done if there is corrosion. You'll check the status of your battery charger. Make sure that you have power onto it and it is charging the batteries. That, this, was, this is a standard operation. Once, once you go through a start cycle on these, basically your equalizer light will be on. That's common too. That's basically boosting the battery back up to its normal state of charge. Most engine sets have mechanical gauges on them that give you an indicator of what the engine is running at. You have an hour meter. This is part of your daily logs that you'll write this hour down for, for the runtime on this engine. You'll have a battery voltage. There's a actually green indicator portion of this which will tell you that the battery is running in the, the most optimal parameters. We have the water temperature. The water temperature basically most engines run between 180 and 200 degrees. And then we have the oil pressure. Oil pressure on these run between 40 and 60. Uh, some, some run higher, some run lower. You might want to check your owner's manuals to see exactly what your engines run at. More and more of the engine manufacturers are coming out with electronic fuel injected engines. Uh, the differences between these basically is they do not have a fuel injection pump on them and you don't have the external fuel lines like you would on, on your typical mechanical engine. Um, with these, they also have newer electronical instruments that monitor all of the functions of the generator and basically your oil pressures, water temperatures, hours of service are all indicated on these little display screens and that's, that's how the electronics basically give you all the information you want on the engine. Another part of your daily check is to check the temperatures of your coolant going, back, going to the radiators and return. Basically, your top line up here is your high temperature coolant going to the radiators from the engine, and the lower line is the return back to the engines. The top line usually runs between 180 and 200 degrees. The lower line usually returns back to the engine at 10 to 20 degrees cooler than the top line. Also, you have a pressure indicator uh, on here. Basically, you should be between 3 and 5 PSI on this lines at all times. When you come into the radiator room, the first thing you should check is the level of your expansion tank. This basically uh, goes up and down depending on the temperature of the coolant. It should operate between two-thirds full all the time. If not, we have a manual pump that we can charge the system back up with. You'll look at your radiators to make sure there's no leaks in any of them. You basically cover all the pipes, look at all the pipes, check everything, um, make sure there's no leaks. You check your variable speed drive controllers for your radiators. These should be in the normal mode. They should have green lights on them, basically saying that they, are, they have power on. They are in the VFD mode. That means they'll automatically turn on and off as the radiators are needed to cool the coolant coming from the engine. Some systems have heat exchangers in them. And basically, you have a primary loop, which is your hot water temperature coming from your engines. This typically runs at the same temperatures that your engines do, so you'll be looking for 180 to 200 degrees coming in. Should be the same pressures as what your, your system is coming in here, so you should be operating around 3 to 5 PSI. Basically, then you have your secondary loop that goes out to remote uh, buildings, basically to provide heat to them. On that side, the system should be a little bit cooler than your primary side coming out and the pressures on that actually run higher. We're running around 30 PSI out to the facilities on that side of it. We have pumps on here. They're circulating pumps on both sides of this loop. They both have switches to make sure the pumps are on. You check your switches to make sure they're in the on position. They should be lit. Also, you can check to see if the pump is actually working by looking at the differential pressure 
between the pumps. Uh, basically, on the downstream side, you should have higher pressure than on the return side to the pump. And you can check that on all of the pumps that are in this system. As part of your daily check, you're going to check your fire suppression system. You're going to look at your bottles and check the gauges on them. All the gauges should be operating in the green. If not, you need to contact someone to have these bottles recharged. Part of your daily check will be to come in and check the conditions of your fire suppression panel. Basically, you should have a green indicator light that tells you the power ons, and then you should have no alarm lights in this panel. One of the other components that you need to keep an eye on in, in the powerhouse is fire extinguishers also. There should be a fire extinguisher in the control room and a fire extinguisher in the generator room. These should be checked uh, daily, basically, to make sure they're still in the green and available in case they're needed to help put out a fire. As you're walking through the power plant uh, doing your daily checks, you're going to make note on the temperatures in, inside the power plant to make sure that it's not overly hot in here. Uh, basically, your exhaust fans are all working properly. Your air intakes are working properly. You can see the red indicator pilot lights that are on every device in here. They should be on. You're checking your lighting to make sure that you have no uh, lights out in your fixtures. We have uh, fans in the ceiling that basically move the air around in the building to keep, keep the air circulating. And you'll just go through and do a general walkthrough and make notes of any problems that you see as you're walking through. As you're getting ready to leave the building, you want to make sure that all of the trash, oily rags, anything that could be a hazard inside the power plant is taken out of the power plant and disposed of properly. Also, as, as a side note to that, all of the doors that are in the building, uh, the, the main overhead door, doors into each one of the rooms and stuff, should not be blocked open. Basically, the fire system is designed so that the rooms are supposed to be enclosed. There's no air leaks in these rooms when that agent goes off. So as you're leaving the building, you want to make sure that all of the doors are securely closed as you go out and make sure you lock the door as you go out of the power plant.